Hi. How y'all doing? My brothers and sisters in Christ, friends and foes alike. Hi. Get your King James Bible, the real Bible. This is a response video to another wonderful question that I was asked. And I'm um, going to answer this question. It involves the third heaven. First, okay, now, right away, I'm not going to be naming names out of respect and courtesy, but a beloved Jewish brother, praise the Lord, uh, asked me this question, and here we go. Get your King James Bible, the real Bible, the complete Jewish Bible, the real Bible, okay? Uh, you need the King James Bible for this, and uh, follow me along in the scriptures that we will look at, okay? This one is not going to be uh, uh, a two-hour video, but i um, going to explain this, okay? Turn in your King James Bible to 2 Corinthians. Go there in the scriptures that we will be looking at today, okay? The question is about the third heaven. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, we will read uh, verses 1 on to verse 4, okay? 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 on to verse 4. Go there in the scriptures in the King James Bible, the real Bible, okay? 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 on to verse 4. Beginning at verse 1, it is not expedient for me, doubtless, to glory. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. Now, in verse 2, he's referring to himself. I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago. Whether in the body, I cannot tell, or whether out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth. Such an one caught up to the third heaven. Verse 3, And I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell, God knoweth, how that he was caught up into paradise, and heard unspeakable words, which is not lawful for a man to utter. We'll read verse 5. Of such a one will I glory, yet of myself I will not glory, but, of, but in mine infirmities. <clears throat> now, there's a lot that we can say about these verses that we just read. First of all, let me point out the word paradise. Okay, on the cross said uh, to the, uh, Jesus said to the uh, thief who confessed, him, who, who, you know, asked the Lord for forgiveness and said, Jesus, Lord. Okay, and Jesus said unto him, verily today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Okay, we're not going to get into that. There's a difference between paradise and Abraham's bosom. Another video, okay? But, verse 4. How that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words, which it is not lawful for a man to utter. Verse 4 is a very keen warning about those who say they have been to heaven and saw the Lord and stuff like that. Like that kid Burpo, you know, heaven is for real. You know, he went up to heaven. Or these these false prophets, these care Catholic guys who said, oh, I was in heaven. If the Apostle Paul said and heard unspeakable words, which it is not lawful for a man to utter, the Apostle Paul, okay, the example for us Christians today, to the Jew first and also to the Gentile, if Paul said that it's not lawful for a man to utter, being the Apostle Paul, why in the wide world of sports entertainment is it okay for that burpo kid and these wicked care Catholics like Duplantis and stuff like that, or whatever they are? Brethren, very quickly, and y'all know this, when you hear someone saying, oh, I've been to heaven and I've seen this, don't buy it for one second, okay? 
But now the third heaven. Okay? Look at verse 2. I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago. He's describing himself above 14 years ago, how long he had been saved. Whether in the body I cannot tell, or whether out of the body I cannot tell, God knoweth. Okay? Some like to surmise that he had this vision and revelation, uh, uh, referencing verse 1. Some like to surmise that this happened to Paul when they done stoned him and thought he was dead. You know? That when he was all like sprawled out, got knocked in the head is when he saw this. This is really, I mean, that, that you can make sense of that, but it's neither here nor there, okay? But look again, such an one caught up to the third heaven. Are there levels in heaven? Is there like one heaven, two heaven, three heaven? Let's find out. And this beloved Jewish brother, um, I, I have not been on YouTube, by the way. I get notifications, and I'm really behind on those, just so you know. Um, he said something, and brother, uh, you said something that we as Jews know only of one heaven. Well, let's, let's look at this, okay? Go now to Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1. In the King James Bible, the real Bible. Okay? Genesis chapter 1. We are going to be reading verses 1 on to verse 20 in Genesis chapter 1. Okay? Go there, please. In the King James Bible, the real Bible. Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 on to verse 20. Okay? Now, very quickly, i got to point this out. In the first three verses of Genesis, you see the separation of the members of the Godhead, okay? The difference between those of us who believe in the biblical Godhead and modalists are that we who believe in the biblical Godhead know that the members of the Godhead can separate themselves, okay? They are not three gods making one god okay they are not three persons a person is a spirit soul and body okay there are not three persons that make one god that is absolute nonsense and incidentally we're not a trinity we are made in the image of God, meaning that we have a spirit, soul, and body. We are not a trinity. I'm sorry, brother. I'm sorry. I heard that and I was dumbfounded, shocked. I was shocked. Wow. Wow. But anyway, very quickly. We see here in the first three verses of Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 through 3, no coincidence, how the Godhead can separate Okay, you and I can't do that. God can. Okay, the members of the Godhead. Okay, let's read. Now, if you do not have or are not using the King James Bible, verse 1 is going to be different. How so? In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, singular. And a lot of the modern Bible perversions that come from Rome, the Vatican, you as a Jew, your greatest enemy, they make a plural, heavens. No, it's heaven. Okay? In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. 
and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. Now, we see in verse 1, God. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And we see in verse 2, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Okay? And God said, spoke, the Word made flesh. Okay? In those first three verses of the Bible, you see the separation of the Godhead. Okay? How the Godhead can separate. And those of us who believe in the biblical Godhead, not modalism, and definitely not the Babylonian, Egyptian, pagan, Roman Catholic Trinity, okay, we know and acknowledge, yeah, the Godhead can separate itself, okay? That's the difference between someone who is a biblical Godhead believer and a modalist, by the way. Thank you very much, okay? Had to throw that out there. Let's continue. Verse 4, And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. One singular day. Okay? Look at verse 1 again. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Question. Question. God has always existed. I am that I am. Okay? I am. He's always existed. Question. Did God create heaven where he is and then the earth? Let's continue reading. Verse 6. And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament, and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. Now watch this. Verse 8. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. Okay? Okay? So, now with that question we, we posed uh, in verse 1, did God create where he was first, then the earth? No. Look at verse 8, okay? Look at verse 8. And God called the firmament heaven. Okay? So, so far, we see two heavens. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Let's continue. Verse 9. And God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together onto one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called he seas, and God saw that it was good. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought forth grass, and herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind, and God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the third day. Okay? Now again, verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Verse 8, And God called the firmament heaven. And the evening and the morning were the second day. Okay? Let's continue. It's important that we read it like this, okay? So bear with me. I hope you're following me along in the King James Bible, the real Bible. Let's continue from verse 14 on to verse 20. 
And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the, from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. Okay? And finally, And God said, Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life, and fowls and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. Okay? If you want to continue reading, feel free on your own time. Okay? So, thus far, we see references to what? Heaven and the firmament, right? Now, what does this mean? You hear people like, for example, I know in the Art of War, Sun Tzu, he talks about heaven. Now, Sun Tzu's original work, The Art of War, does debate, uh, date back to sometime in B.C. Okay, question. Was Sun Tzu making a reference to where God himself sits? No. Heaven. You want to see the heaven? Go outside your door and look up. Okay? I will have you know, the word sky, okay, appears seven times in the King James Bible. Sky appears seven times in the King James Bible. Okay. Heaven, sky, we can debate about that. But, like I said, you want to see the heaven? Go outside, look up, there's the heaven. Okay? There's the heaven. What about the second heaven? Okay? Now, here is where some like to bring in the argument about what the shape of the earth is. And I have to address this, okay? Because now, and I've made one video addressing the shape of the earth, okay? Personally, I still do believe that the earth is a ball, okay? I know a lot of brethren believe that the earth is either flat or what is it, geocentric, okay? And God bless you to you, my brothers and sisters who believe that the earth is flat or that it's geocentric, whatever. God bless you. Uh, the shape of the earth is not a salvation issue. Okay? It is not. It is an interesting subject. Okay? But it is not pertinent to our salvation. We have bigger fish to fry. I'm not getting into that. Okay? But, Okay? The heaven is out there. Go outside your door and look up. There's the heaven. Okay? And what do we read here? Okay? <clears throat> in verse 15 in Genesis chapter 1, or uh, 14, excuse me. Okay? In verse 14, And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. Verse 16. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. Okay. So here comes the thing about the shape of the earth. <clears throat> okay. And this is valid for both whatever you, if you think it's flat or a geocentric or a ball, okay? The dome or the, the enclosing, the dome, the atmosphere, okay? The heaven, go outside and look at them. Within the heaven is the what, okay? Is the what? 
Verse 18, or excuse me, ver, uh, verse 16, beg your pardon. And God made two great lights, the great light to rule the day and the lesser, the lesser to rule the night. He made the stars also. Okay? So he's talking about the sun and the moon and the stars are within the heaven. Go outside and look. Okay? The firmament <clears throat> is either the dome itself or space. Now, a lot of those who believe that the earth is flat, who are saved, born again, King James Bible-believing Christians, God bless you, they don't believe there's a space, per se. Okay? And those of us who are saved, born again, King James Bible-believing Christians, who believe that the earth is a globe, we don't necessarily believe there is a space, per se. What do you mean, per se? Um... The what is it? The geocentric and the flat earth and even the globe people who believe in that. OK, there is a dome on the flat earth or the geocentric earth or a dome or a enclosing that is around the earth or on the earth. OK. OK. The firmament and very quickly. Let's let's make uh, let's define firmament, okay? Beg your pardon. I, I do have to to uh, use my cell phone. I do have a Webster's 1828 dictionary, but um, I'm not going to drag it out because I got it here on my cell phone, okay? Firmament, as defined by Webster's 1828 dictionary, okay? Now there are several references to firmament. In the King James Bible, there are 17 references of firmament in the King James Bible. Uh, in Genesis, Job, Ezekiel, maybe Psalms, and Daniel, and Matthew, and stuff like that. Okay? Not in the Pauline epistles. Oh, and I think there's one in the Hebrews. You can fact check me on that on your own time, okay? Well, let's define what the firmament is as defined by Webster's 1828 Dictionary. We already saw the definition of firmament within the text, but let's read this too, okay? Firmament, from uh, Webster's 1828 Dictionary. Firmament, noun. The region of the air, the sky, or heavens. In scripture, the word denotes an expanse, a wide extent, for such is the signification of the Hebrew word, coinciding with rejo, region, and reach. The original, therefore, does not convey the sense of solidarity, of solidity, but of stretching, extension, the great arch, the great arc, or expanse over our heads in which are placed the atmosphere and the clouds, and in which the stars appear to be placed and are really seen. And God said, and he's referencing Genesis 1 verse 6, and God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let, the divide, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And also Genesis 1 verse 14 and God said, let there be lights in the firmament. Okay? That was from Webster's 1828 Dictionary. We did not necessarily have to look at that because it is defined here in the text. Okay? So, the firmament. Okay? The atmosphere or the dome itself, the ark that covers the flat earth, geocentric earth, or the globe that covers the whole thing. Okay, that's the second heaven. The third heaven, beloved, is where God is, where he himself is presently. Okay? That's the third heaven. But I want to address this to you because, um, and I love you, Ben Israel, I love you very much. I'm not, I'm not poking at you or nothing like that. You did make in the comment, I have not looked on at your comment on YouTube, but I got it through the notification, okay? You said that we have always believed in one heaven, where God sits, okay? Yes, but 
heaven, go outside, look at it, okay, this where the, the sun, the moon, the stars are. The second heaven, the firmament itself, okay, okay. The third heaven is where God sits. Did anyone in Scripture besides Paul get this? Go to Deuteronomy chapter 10. Deuteronomy chapter 10. And uh, I do have to bring this up incidentally. Um, like I said, the shape of the earth argument, I, I refuse to debate that or get into it. To me, it's an irrelevant issue. It really is. The same scriptures that I would use to try to prove that the earth is a globe, the same scriptures those who believe in the flat earth or the geocentric uh, version of the earth uh, would use those same to, to prove their point. Okay, and I will have you know, I am slowly kind of gravitating away from the globe idea. Okay, slowly. I still think it's a globe, but that should make a few of you happy. But anyway, go to Deuteronomy chapter 10. Deuteronomy chapter 10. We will read verses 12 on to verse 14. Okay, go there. Okay. The heaven, the sky, okay? Seven times in the scriptures does the word sky appear, okay? But the heaven, go outside and look at them. The heavens, the dome, the firmament. The third heaven, where God himself is. Did any of your people know of this? Let's find out. Deuteronomy 10, verses 12 on to verse 14. Beginning at verse 12. And now, Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee, but to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, to keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I command thee this day for thy good. Behold, the heaven and the heaven of heavens is the Lord thy God, the earth also, with all that therein is. Did you see that? Let's read that again. Behold, the heaven and the heaven of heavens is the Lord thy God, is the Lord's thy God. The earth also with all that therein is. So you see, Ben Israel, Moses, or Moshe, Moses got that because it was given to him. You know who else got that? Okay, and if I'm, uh, uh, please don't, uh, please don't be offended about getting it when I say that. But, um, you know, you did ask me about this, okay? Go to, I got idiot notes. Go to 1 Kings chapter 8. 1 Kings chapter 8. 1 Kings chapter 8. Verses 25 on to verse 27. Okay? Go there. This is King Solomon. Outside of God manifest in the flesh, our Lord Jesus Christ, our God and Father. The only other guy outside of God manifest, uh, eh, God manifest in the flesh, the wisest man who ever lived, was Solomon. Right? Come on. 1 Kings chapter 8, verses 25 on the verse 27. Okay? We 
We begin at verse 25 on to verse 27. Therefore now, Lord God of Israel, keep with thy servant David my father, that thou promisedest him, saying, There shall not fail thee a man in my sight to sit on the throne of Israel, so that thy children take heed to their way, that they walk before me as thou hast walked before me. And now, O God of Israel, let thy word, Lord case W, I pray thee be verified, which thou spakest unto thy servant David my father. But will God indeed dwell on the earth? Behold, the heaven and heaven of heavens cannot contain thee, how much less this house that I have built it. Sky, the dome or firmament, okay? The third heaven where God is, where he is sitting, okay? And with the Godhead that can separate itself, okay? Very important to note that, okay? Also, let's take a few of uh, singular verse references. Go to Psalm 19. Psalm 19. Beg your pardon, brethren. Psalm 19. Verse 1, singular verse reference here. Psalm 19, verse 1. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament sheweth his handiwork. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament, giving you what that is, she with his handiwork. Another singular verse reference. Psalm 115. Which I'm almost to in my daily devotional reading. I think I'm in uh, Psalm 110 now. Psalm 115. Verse 16, is it? Yes. All right. Psalm 115, verse 16. Actually, let's read verses 15 and 16 in Psalm 115, okay? Beg your pardon. Psalm 115, verses 15 and 16. Ye are blessed of the Lord which made heaven, and earth, the heaven, even the heavens, are the Lord's, but the earth hath, hath he given to the children of men. Okay? And also Isaiah 66. Isaiah 66, verses 1 and verse 2. Please go there. I hope you're following. I know the one verse reference thing is like very quick, but go with me, okay? Isaiah 66, verses 1 and verse 2. Oh, excuse me. Beg your pardon. Thus saith the Lord, The heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that ye build unto me? And where is the place of my rest? For all those things hath mine hand made, and all those things have been, saith the Lord. But to this man will I look, even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit, and trembleth at my word. Let's read verse 1 again. Thus saith the Lord, the heaven is my throne, the heaven, and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that ye build unto me? 
And where is the place of my rest? Go back now to 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Okay? Second Corinthians chapter 12. Verses 1 under verse 5. Second Corinthians 12 verses 1 under verse 5. It is not expedient for me, doubtless, to glory. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago, whether in the body I cannot tell, or whether out of the body I cannot tell, God knoweth. Such an one caught up to the third heaven. Remember what we just read in Isaiah 66, verse 1? And I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell, God knoweth. How that he was caught up into paradise, and heard unspeakable words, which is not lawful for a man to utter. Of such and one will I go glory, yet of myself I will not glory, but in mine infirmities. The third heaven, Ben Israel, is where God our Lord and Savior, our Father Jesus Christ, is seated in the third heaven. That's where God is. The heaven, you go outside your door, look up, there it is. The heavens, the actual firmament itself, the dome, the ark over the earth, or that surrounds the earth, okay? The third heaven is where God actually sits. The, uh, the New Testament, beloved, is not teaching contrary to what your people had already known, such as Moses and King Solomon had acknowledged in the uh, previous writings and stuff like that. It's not contrary, okay? Not at all. The heaven and heaven of heavens, okay? Moses and Solomon were giving example of the heaven, the sky, the heavens, the firmament itself, and the third heaven, where God is. Okay? So it, it is not contradictory in any way, shape, or form. Okay? He's actually, uh, when he says the third heaven, is uh, defining more clearly what we already saw Moses state in Deuteronomy 10, verse 14, and what King Solomon stated in 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 27. And God himself in Isaiah 61, verse 1, where he is, and that the earth is his footstool. So the third heaven is where God is. Uh, Paul is not talking about multiple heavens as of one guy's going to be here, another guy's going to be here, and that, no, it's not like that at all. No. Okay? Um, like I said, I, this wasn't not going to be that long of a video, um, but the third heaven is where God sits, and Paul is not teaching about like, okay, these guys are going to be in this heaven, this guy's going to be in this heaven, and then another guy's going to be in this heaven. No, he's describing the uh, the sky firmament and where God is Himself. Okay, uh, I hope that answers your question for you. Uh, any more, please feel free if I can answer them. Lord willing, he'll give me the answer to give on to you. Uh, if not, I will find out who can or will find the answer myself, and we can go through this together, okay? Thank you very much, uh, beloved Ben Israel. I love you. And to all you, my brethren and sisters, I love you very much. Uh, very quickly, I want to acknowledge something. Um I'm really bad at getting back to people. Any of you who have contacted me out, you know, personally, you know that. And no excuses. I do work a full-time job still, even with all this nutty poison crown stuff. I also have a wife. No excuses. But um, I, I tend to be a busy guy. 
So for those of you who have contacted me, if I have not gotten back to you, please forgive me. I'm not avoiding you or ignoring you. I, I do have other things, you know, and I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Okay. Anyway, uh, that's it for this video. I don't know when my next video will be or what it will be about. I have an idea, but that's not up to me. Okay? I love you. Thank you very much. And I'll see you in the next video, whatever or whenever that may be. In Jesus' name. I love you. Bye-bye.